We are back again here at Families Empowered with another couple of campuses to introduce you to. And we're really excited to be here with a local Houston school um, to talk about how they've been tackling distance learning and what they've got in store for the next school year. Now that I think we're all pretty much ready to be done with the summer and be back in school. Um, and so we wanna talk through what that means for parents. Uh, just a quick refresher, if you're new, if this is your first time here with us, my name is Ayla and I am the Marketing and Communications Manager at Families Empowered. And what we do is we work for parents. We're here for you all the time to help you find a school that works for your kids. And one of the ways that we do that is usually with in-person events, but with this COVID pandemic going on right now, we can't really do those. So we're bringing them to you digitally and we're really excited to bring Ms. Funes and Ms. Castillo here today to talk about their school. So um, I'll let you guys take it away. Ms. Funes, get us started. Tell us who you are and what your school is all about. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Hema Funes um, and I'm here. I'm the school director at East 6 Jensen Classical Academy. Ms. Castillo. Hi, I'm Diana Castillo. I'm super excited to be here with all of you today. And I am the school director at the West Chase Classical Academy. And so we would like to, again, we thank you so much again for hosting us and having us here. Um, one of just the passion that comes behind what we do and why we started these schools is large, has a large part to do with our stories and where we come from, our experience. And um, so we're gonna share a little bit about that first um, before we get to our question, our question and answer session. So like I mentioned, I, my name is Diana Castillo. I was born in a very small town in Mexico and my family was content living the life that we lived there. And um, when I was three years old, my father was kidnapped, which just led my family to then be thrown into a you know, whirlwind of changes where we had to leave at my father's release. Um, after his release, we had to change countries. We had to change our language. We had to change the support system that we had in our small town in Mexico. Everything was new and foreign to us. Um, when we arrived in this country, we were able to really see my mom looked and said, hey, you know what? The youngest two daughters have a really great opportunity here to look for a wonderful school in Houston. So this is what she set off to do is to give us a great education. And um, we, you know, she was just like parents, probably many of you that are watching right now, you look everywhere, you try and find the best choices for your children. And that's exactly what my mom did. Being in a new, a different country, being in a place where you didn't have your, so you don't have your support systems like we did back home. It was a very challenging time, but luckily we were able to connect through wonderful educators and teachers to a um, charter school that was starting. It was the very first years. Um, and I remember the co-founder knocking on doors, you know, saying, Hey, there's a promise of, of college and we're going to get you guys to and through college. And this is, you know, something that my mom heard and back in Mexico, this is not something unless you have the means, you don't really dream as far as college or going to, you know, the university in Mexico. So my mom, it's the first time that she really heard and said, my daughter can go to college. And, you know, she got really interested and then enrolled me in Kip Academy. And I can say that I was super fortunate to be in the first set of classes back in the 90s. Um, of from this you know big charter school movement. So what happened after this through the hard work of my family, myself and my teachers, I got a full scholarship to go to Miss Porter School in Connecticut and then continued my studies there at um, my studies for college at Cornell University where I did my undergraduate studies. And I share this just because to me, my story should not be the exception. My story should be the norm for all children all over the, the country, no matter their zip code, no matter what neighborhood they grew up in, what language they speak, every single child deserves the same opportunity to achieve and to really follow their dreams and make them come true. And this is why we decided to start these schools um, with the partnership of neighborhood schools, community development to really come together and think, how can we bring this you know, small scale family support where we really are here for families. And if they have questions that they know that we are here, they can ask, they're not gonna come to us and we're not gonna say, oh, I don't know, figure it out. This is the support that our families received when we were growing up is the same support that we wish to receive. And so we decided, you know, as alums to come together 
and to start these schools so that again, all children have the same opportunity that we did to, to achieve and to dream big, to dream big, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castillo for sharing that. And if you guys will let me, I wanna share a little bit about my story as well. Um, so I actually um, clearly remember uh, in seventh grade was, um, was a really, uh, was a year of a lot of changes. So that particular summer, just like every summer, my family and I were gonna head to Pecos, Texas because that's where uh, we were agricultural workers, which was just like fancy for, you know, we picked crops and, and we did everything that we had to, to support our family. Um, but then that summer, uh, just like for Ms. Castillo, the, the founder of KIPP came to my house and he started saying words like career and future and college and just words that as a seventh grader, I should have heard, but had never heard before. Um, and there was only one catch. The catch was that I had to stay that summer so that I could attend school. And that was really difficult because that meant that my family would have to give up a lot of their, you know, their livelihood. Like this is how we survived. This is how we made a living. And so staying in Houston uh, meant that, you know, I, we would have to make really difficult choices. Um, and so my, my dad actually had to make that choice. And he made the only choice that he felt was right for his family at that time. And that was for us to stay. Um, so that I could have, he, he saw something that I didn't see at the time, which was an, an educational opportunity. Uh, and that led me to my path to, you know, through high school, to, through college and through, um, through getting a master's and, and doing all the things that I had never dreamed of. And it was that, um, it was a crucial moment um, that, that led to that. It was that love that he showed for me for, you know, to make making those decisions that I constantly see in my community, in our families. Those are the decisions that our families are making every single day by selecting, you know, the best fit for the students, by making sure that they're finding opportunities and that's what we're providing. So um, every child deserves an equitable education and every child is worthy and deserves to be treated as such. And therefore, um, we, we decided to come together and create a place to build a place where that generation of students, Diana, uh, uh, Barbara, our other school director, and myself are building uh, the place to tra transform our communities. And that's really what we want to accomplish um, with our schools. And and we invite everyone to, you know, ask questions, find out who we are, make sure that, you know, the place where you're going to send your child and the place where you're, you're going to trust the most precious, you know, thing in your life is is someone that absolutely cares, not just for, for their academics, which is wonderful. That's obviously, you know, a top of our list. Um, but for their general general well-being. And as you're going to find out a little bit more about us, we're focused on academics, of course, um, but we also want to, you know, focus on the emotional development of students. And just in seeing the amount of support that we receive, that's the kind of support that we're going to give every single one of our families who steps into, into our schools. That's so wonderful. You're both so passionate. I love it. <laughs> and it seems that you can both really connect with parents because you've been through this. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So let's jump right into it. Um, let's go ahead and talk about, tell me a little bit about the school's mission, um, right? Because you, you know, we, we know what the school was built on, but you know, what's your mission? And also tell me about the grades that you have available for students. So our mission is to provide hope for scholars who will become change agents of the world through commitment, creativity, and courage. At West Chase Classical, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we currently have kindergarten and first grade, but next year we're super, super excited to be opening up pre-K three, pre-K four, kinder, first, second, fifth, and sixth. So we're expanding our family and excited to welcome everyone. So at East 6 Jensen, we will, our available grades will be uh, kindergarten, first, second, fifth, and sixth grade. So we're currently, uh, you know, if you, we're gonna give you the, the address in just a minute um, and you guys can log in, find out more about our school, sign up. And, you know, we wanna make sure it is, we are a charter school, which means that um, we also have to pretty much do first come first serve. So, um, 
log on in and make sure that, you know, we have a, a space available for you. And we're inviting everyone to come out. N not right now, but we're going to, anytime that you you get an opportunity, we're actually doing a lot of things for the community right now. So if you wanted to come and see our campus, see our building, um, definitely following some, some safeguards, but we're doing lots of things at our school currently to provide not just for our current students, but for our community through our partnerships, which is another uh, amazing thing that we're doing at our school. We're strengthening those those community partnerships. Um, so right now we're working with the Houston Food Bank with uh, Victory Outreach, East Extension Super Neighborhoods, Northside. We're offering um, we're offering fresh fruits and vegetables to families, to the community, so that people do have a place that's not just a place where their children are going to get educated, but also where they're receiving other types of support. Because that's the, we we want to also become a pillar in our communities. So. Just another resource, like um, Ms. Funes mentioned, if you need any support on the north side of Houston, of course, you can reach out to her about where to pick up this food. And on the south side, southwest side, we partner with um, West Houston, WAM, which is West Houston Assistant Ministries, um, which is just a short drive from school, and they're doing amazing things. And we're super fortunate to just have people who really have welcomed us, opened their doors to us. They support our families. Um, we had a family who recently lost their home due to a fire, and you know, WAM was the first the first partner that I reached out to and they said, come on over, we're going to help with, you know, whatever we can and it helps with some gift cards. And right now they're doing distribution. And I just want to mention that so our families know on um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting at 930 and they go um, until about one or 400 cars, whichever one comes first, but they have a lot of produce just like they do at East Tex um, during their distribution day. So we really do invite you all, even though you can't come and get a tour that you all come or reach out to us if you need help with any any just food or items during this time. That's so wonderful. So let's go through the grades one more time because Ramona had a great question. She's curious to know is pre-K four is available at the East Tech location. So at East Six Jensen, at East Six Jensen, we do have we will be having a pre-K three and pre-K four. Um, and as at a at both of our campuses, actually. So yes, you can start enrolling. This will be the first year. Um, and so if you want more information um, and you want to talk directly to us about kind of the process to to sign up, because I, um, as Ramona probably knows, and a lot of uh, a lot of people, there are different um, opportunities. There's like half day, there's, there's full day. And if you guys uh, want to know kind of how that's going to work at our school, uh, you can call 832-478-2398. And you can speak to any of us, um, to Ms. Ms. Salazar or myself, actually, we'll, we'll be answering your calls. Uh, but yes, if you go to eastixjensen-classical.com, um, you are more than welcome to sign up for pre-K three and pre-K four, kindergarten, first grade, fifth, and sixth grade. Okay. Fantastic. So let's hop right into it. Tell me a little bit about um, the learning, because that's what we're all here to know about is what it's going to look like for kiddos. Um, right now, we're distance learning. What does a typical day of distance learning look like for your students? So are you able to hear me? Yeah, awesome. Sorry, I got an alert about my microphone. Um, so what we're doing right now is we have a really awesome website that um, one of our teachers created for all of our scholars the way at West Chase where we go in and we have different pages in the morning for SEL, social emotional learning time. Our scholars get to go in and they um, they read a, a question for the day and they all share as a school their thoughts on that page. And then there's um, we're making sure that they have access to all of their blended learning materials. So iStation, ST Math, which were really great programs that we were using along with the learning in school where we shrink the classroom and make sure that scholars are getting their more individualized smaller group attention with the teacher while some of the other scholars are on this blended learning um so now they have their lessons that they're continuing to do and one of the things that i'm just super proud of my staff and our teachers at both schools is that what they're focusing on as well is small group instruction so all those scholars are getting their lessons through these virtual ways our teachers are making sure that they're logging on and that they're meeting face to face, well, virtual face to face with um, our scholars in their small groups so that they can help them with their reading. They can help them in whatever um, ways. We also have uh, teachers who 
are doing literacy circles. So they will mail out chapter books for their students and they'll continue, you know, the homework assignment is to read chapter one and then they sit down as a small group of three and they'll have a discussion just like we would have a, a book club. And so it's their book club time and they're still getting all of these enriching activities um, even through distance learning. And in, in addition, I'll just add to, to all those amazing things that are going on at our, at our campuses. Um, we, we strive, and right now we have really small cohorts of students, which is wonderful. So we strive to do different, differentiated instruction as much as we can. Um, our students who have special needs, we have our special ed teacher who is also, um, you know, has, has scheduled specific time with our students. So all our students who are receiving um, services at school are continuing to receive them even now. Um, I mean, again, with uh, with just with what Ms. Castillo was saying, um, we're also making sure that our kids are receiving uh, chapter books, books on grade level, so that they can continue reading at home and they have they don't just have to be on a computer every day. But we did offer um, Chromebooks for all of our students. All the students um, who had a need, or we were able to meet that need. In addition, if students didn't have, if families didn't have internet, we offered hotspots for them. Um, and so, you know, if whatever situations come up, our families know that they can that they can count on us. And that's the biggest thing right now with the with the distance, with distance learning. Yes, we want to make sure students are still um, receiving a great great education. But more than that, we want to make sure that they're okay. We're checking in with them at least twice a week. About ninety percent of our students are logging on. Um, daily and, and having daily communication with our teachers uh, because they want to. They they we actually to be honest with you we actually haven't even said that attendance is is mandatory in any way. But our our kids log in because they want to see their teachers. They want to you know interact with um, with those adults who just care and love love them so much and interact with each other. And so that it's just been it's just been such a learning experience for us as well and I'm, as I'm sure for most districts to do distance learning now. But, and we've learned a lot, we've um, achieved a lot with them. And, and the biggest thing that I've that I've seen is that you know, our students are engaged because that's the culture that we've built at our school. They're engaged because they, they know that, you know, there's people and adults at our school who care about them. And so they willingly log in and, and, and come into Google Classroom and let us know, you know, when when there's something else in addition to what we're doing, what else we can do for them. So that's, I think that's the biggest um, thing that I'm proud, you know, that, I, that I'm pri uh, uh, proud of, I'm sorry. Um, because they, they, inter they let you know, they make sure that you know what they need. And so we meet them where they are. That's so wonderful that you guys are able to offer such a diverse school day, even while distance learning. Um, I, I love the the mention of getting off the screen. I think that's something that's been tough for all of us, even working from home. So that's wonderful to hear about. Um, you know, one of the questions that we've had, you know, speaking to your point of supporting parents, supporting families, um, one of the questions that we've had here at Families Empowered over our phone lines, um, because we have parents, we're talking to parents all day, every day on the phones, is um, how schools are supporting Spanish-speaking parents um, who want to help with homework, um, but the work's in English. How do they help? How do they get engaged? How are you guys supporting on that end? So I, just being a Spanish speaker myself, I, I do tell parents that whenever we have conferences or we have meetings, one, we do send all of our posts on Dojo. We try to be, there is, for well, let me, let me backtrack. We post a lot of our things. Our communication is mainly done on Class Dojo. And it does have an option for translating or translation, but being a Spanish speaker myself and knowing how much my parents struggled, um, just always not knowing what does it say exactly? Google Translate sometimes, although it's great technology, some words just don't make sense. And we want to make sure that we, there's not a, you know, just any, any that nothing is lost in translation. So what we do is that we make sure that when we post something in English, we also write it ourselves in Spanish so that it's clear to parents what we mean so that they're not having to guess or to click the translate button, that it's something that's there for them because we don't want to make things more difficult and we want to make things as accessible as possible. So we also make sure that we're sending flyers if there's things um, that we're sending home that we're translating these and that they're coming in both languages for homework. I even with my teachers, there's um, one of my teachers will send me, you know, like a screenshot or say, hey, like this parent needs help and I'll call them or I'll make sure to check in with them. And it's not, 
you know, just being the principal doesn't mean that you are just, you know, running the school, like you should, you're in there with the kids. So what we're doing is making sure that if I'm able to help, if our TA is able to help, another teacher that speaks Spanish is able to help, we're all doing our part to make sure that parents know they can reach out to us and they can ask us questions because we can go and ask the teacher ourselves and just serve as a translator for them because we never ever want them to feel lost, especially having seen our parents struggle through that growing up. Yeah, that, that's so wonderful and so important. Um, so we're almost at the end of the school year, but um, can parents enroll now for next year? Uh, what, what does that process look like for them? Um, and is there anything that they can do for their kids um, to help them out over the summer if potentially their current distance learning situation hasn't quite been working for their student? I'll go, go ahead, Emma. <laughs> Absolutely. So I can give you, I'll go ahead and give you uh, our address and, and then Deanna, if you want to give um, out yours. So once again, eastdixjensen-classical.com. Parents are able to come in, complete the online application. Uh, we will reach out immediately. We are still working around the clock. And so so when, as soon as we see, you know, you and you putting in your information and your child, we want to get to know you, want to get to know who you are. And so you'll probably be receiving a call from myself, uh, from the other school director. And we, um, with some of the things that you can do right now is if if you want to continue uh, making sure that your, your students are practicing literacy, just read, read to them, read with them. It can be in English, it could be in Spanish, it could be in whatever language you want. That's one of the best things that you can possibly do. And I will say to parents, and I know that everyone is very, um, you know, there's, there's different levels of anxiety, like what should I be doing when and how much is too much, how much is not enough. Um, do what you feel comfortable right now. If you, if your parent, if you're, uh, most of your schools are offering, um, you know, help assistance, reach out to your teachers. I promise you, your teachers want to help because I know that we do. I know my teachers are excited. Uh, if, if you have students that are currently in first and fifth grade and you can't reach out to your teachers, reach out to us. Uh, I already gave you the number, but I'll give it to you again, 832-478-2398. Uh, or you can also call 281 six, seven, one, four, nine, three, one. And th those are the biggest things that you can do. Communicate with your educators, communicate with us. Um, if there are certain questions, if you are actually noticing different academic struggles, troubles, uh, struggles, you can write those down. Let, you know, your, your, let us know as soon as, you know, we are able to come back onto campus, uh, and you're able to have that face to face with, um, with your child's educators. Those are the things that are going to be super helpful. Like if there's anything that you've noticed at home that they might be struggling with, it, it, it could be a number of things. It could be, you know, just the fact that this is such a different thing. We've never done, you know, uh, online learning in this way. So it's all new. So just take a breather. It'll be fine. If you come to our school, it'll be even better. So make sure that you're checking <laughs> out. Go to e6jensen-classical.com. Uh, and then, Ms. Castillo, your link. No, so I absolutely agree with um, everything Hema said. I think we underestimate how much, how important just reading is. And a lot of times you want the lessons, we want, you know, all these other resources. But if you just pick up a book and you read with your child, I cannot stress how much of an impact that will make. They're seeing good reading behaviors through you. They're able to make, to comprehend different situations. And like we said, even if it's in Spanish, all of those skills translate. So it would be just something that would be amazing for you to create these habits with your children of, you know, instilling a love for reading and them remembering, hey, during this time we were all alone. I was confused, but I remember my mom or my dad or my grandma, my grandpa, aunt or uncle would read with me and just how much of a wonderful memory that can be for them. And we don't know what that would cost. You know, in the future, they might just always love to pick up a book, which is always something that's that's a plus. Um, and I also have um, just resource packs and I know some parents like paper and pencil things that they can continue to review. And if you reach out to the teacher and they're not able to provide that for you, like Ms. Funa said, we absolutely invite you to reach out to us. Right now I would say that our Facebook pages uh, would be the best to just send a message and say, hey, I need some help. And we would be more than happy to provide you with resources, to prov provide you with um, some sort of pen pencil, paper and pencil alternatives just for anyone who's needing things right now because we know that it's overwhelming and we totally understand and the teachers understand too so please don't let this be a time of just stress for your family we're all here for you and if again you can't really reach the 
your current school and teachers, make sure to reach out to us because there's always a solution and there's always something that we can do to help. Um, and my website or our school website is classical.edu backslash Westchase. Again, classical.edu backslash Westchase. And the phone number would be 832 343 9574. 832 343-9574. Amazing. I love it. Um, so, so many resources and alternatives that, you know, I think it's important to remember paper and pencil does work better for some kids and some students. So yeah. I love that you guys are addressing that. Um, so we went over the grade levels that you guys serve, but are all of those grade levels actually open for enrollment for next year? They are. We have right now pre-K three is the only one that we're waiting on at West Chase, but we do have an application that's live for pre-K and pre-K four for those uh, parents who might be wondering what does that mean. It's just pre-K for four year olds. Um, it's pre-K for four year olds. Kindergarten, first, second um, are open as well as fifth and sixth. So you can submit your applications by going to classical.edu backslash West Chase, and the same for the website that Ms. Luna shared for her enrollment. Are those grade levels the same for the East Tech Strengthening Campus, Ms. Funes? Uh, the grade levels, yes. I, I believe the only one that's different in sixth grade, Ms. Castillo, I believe. So it's uh, pre-K three, pre-K four, kindergarten, first, second, fifth, and sixth. Perfect. Wonderful. So that's a lot of open space. It's a lot of opportunity for parents and kids and families. Um, and that's wonderful. And so now that we're talking about next year, I know we're already, it seems like the summer has already been a million years long uh, and we're all ready to get yeah. back into the classroom. Um, tell me a little bit about what a typical day looks like for learners in the classroom at your schools. So at West Chase, what we have um, where scholars come in, one of the times that I think is just the most beautiful is breakfast family style in the classroom um, with their teacher. And so scholars get to do some morning assignments or just, you know, feelings, journals or whatever activity the teacher has for them where she's able to check in, go over homework and then have small conferences with scholars, depending on what, you know, like, hey, I noticed this you know, this assignment wasn't complete. Let's talk about it because we do want to make sure that we're instilling just like a strong work ethic or just responsibility in our kids so that they're understanding from a very young age. You know, if you have something like my dad always shared in my teachers that I shared growing up, that if you do something, you do it well. And that's just some of the character values that we want to make sure our scholars have is from a very young age that they're learning that this represents you and we're going to always put our best you know, sell forward. So they start with that time with their teacher, then they go into a um, morning meeting where they're able to check in and their feelings and just have just activities where they get to learn a little bit more about each other. They go over calendar and then go into guided reading where we have scholars who are learning from the teacher. Every single child sees the teacher every single day. It's not based on ability. It's based on just the fact that everyone woke up them that morning and got dressed for a great education. And it's not fair. We're only focusing on the ones who might need a little bit, bit, bit more help or the ones who might not need a little more help. We just want to make sure that every single child gets to see the teacher so that they're getting a more individualized approach to their education. And we're not just sitting and teaching whole group all day that we're targeting kids where we need them to be because even if you have a first grader reading at a third grade level guess what they can be challenged more and they can be pushed and they deserve to be pushed and challenged um so that's what our focus is they also have science social studies math class um we do have two recess blocks because they are five and six year, year olds right now and i think a lot of the times there's so much pressure in school just to you know get those good grades and super academics are super super important but we also need to remember that they are children that they are only five and they're only six and that we need to give them those breaks that we also as we're seeing now that we're you know a lot of us are at home and just in front of screens and computers and meetings that we do need to take small breaks every now and then so we do have two smaller recess blocks just so that they can you know be kids and come back and be ready to to have their focus you know really on during lessons and we also have um, a social emotional learning block at the end of the day. And I'll, I'll give it to Ms. Funes now so she can share a little bit more about that. 
So absolutely, our day is is pretty similar. So at the beginning of the day, you know, we start with breakfast and we uh, all campus wide, we do what we call DEER, which is drop everything and read. So for the first few minutes, you know, students are, are enjoying a uh, book of their choice. Um, they're not, um, it, this is across the board and this just gives us an opportunity to check in with students as well if we need to from, you know, anything that was pending, whether it's, you know, any students came in, um, maybe not feeling that well that day or, you know, all the different things that we sometimes don't give time to, like that is our time to check in with students to make sure that they're doing okay, that they're starting their day off on the right foot, that if they need a pencil, we're giving them the pencil. We make sure that those things are getting taken care of so that once we start class, we're ready to go. Um, in addition to, so what, what Ms. Castillo was saying, we, we follow that very same model. So, uh, we'll start with calendar math. We start, uh, our, there's a lot of, um, so we do follow like a, blend, a blended learning model, our school. Uh, we do a lot of centers. We make sure that students are um, receiving. So, you know, at the beginning of the year, we're going to be gauging kind of where everybody is. And, and because we want to differentiate and make sure that we're providing instruction that's on level, uh, we do have different programs that that um, help us, you know, meet those different needs, uh, depending what those are, whether it's a child, you know, during math time, if, if that's a child, if that's a time for a child to be receiving services, that's when we have either push-in services or pull-out services. So uh, I, I know there's uh, there's some questions sometimes about whether charter schools are providing um, SPED services or 504 services, and we absolutely do all of that. We, we make sure that um, any services our students need in addition to just academic assistance, like they are receiving and that we have people who are certified, who are qualified, uh, who, who make sure that they're on top of, of that as well. Uh, at the end of the day, we absolutely, um, we absolutely, we finish with, with what's called PATHS. Uh, it's a, a social emotional learning um, a curriculum. So we, we don't just, we don't want to just talk about you know how this is important we want to make sure that we're following through and and giving students really the opportunity to, to um, learn and practice how to you know how to uh, make sure they're managing their feelings they're speaking about their feelings that um, you, you know, we know behavior is is communication, and so we're teaching them how to communicate better, not just about, about academics, but, but about any other things that might be going on with them. So, uh, for our Fifth graders for our fifth grade scholars, we also have an intervention block built in uh, throughout the day so that they um, are able to receive that intervention. Uh, we do have a part at the end uh, uh, with with our school um, oh I think mrs Funes unfortunately is breaking up a little bit um, I'm not sure if she can so, hear us. um miss Castillo do you want to take over um, a little bit while we're waiting for her internet to catch back up with us yes <laughs> So we were just discussing the social emotional block um, and more about the, I know Ms. Funes, there's uh, blocks that were set for intervention is what she was um, speaking about. I uh, could hear between um, the, the freezing and also just social emotional learning that our big focus at our schools is not just academics. It's, like we said, it's of course the, you know, the most important for us to make sure that we're focusing and getting our scholars ready to have a choice filled life and to be able to make whatever choice they want of what success looks like for them. But we also want to make sure that that equally as important are those character values are different things that we want them to come out with that they're not just really smart people, but that they're smart, kind citizens of the world because we, you know, seeing kindness will make the world a better place. And we need to make sure that we are teaching them that 
that um, we're helping parents because parents are their first teachers and that we're all working together to make sure that we're creating a be better world and what better place to do that than at, at our schools all across the country to make sure that, you know, children, that people grow up, children grow up to be just kinder so we can have really smart, kind citizens. Wonderful. I, I love that. Um, and so I think, you know, you guys really hit a lot on um, literacy and reading and how important reading is. And I think that that really speaks to Trayvana's question about, um, you know, addressing the today's destructive reading crisis. Um, and I, I love that there's a huge focus on that. Um, and we've got another parent question um, also, um, just asking about pre-K four, is it a full day or is it a half day? It is the full day pre for pre-K four. Is that the same? Um, could be as you have both pre-K three and pre-K four, is that right? Mm -hmm. So pre-K three is a half day, pre-K four is a full day. Great, that's so so good to know. Um, and that's awesome for all our pre-K parents looking because I know we've got a lot of them. Um, you know, and you, you guys have talked a lot about how you support parents and you're with parents. Um, what's your relationship like with your parents and your families at your school and why is that so important to your mission? Our parents are just everything to us. Our parents are, we, we definitely have a very close relationship with our parents. We love every day it's been such a great honor to have them be a part of our school especially with us starting so small i think we've you know become a very small close-knit community we do have our parents that we remember from the very very first info session that we had back in may um where and we always joke that you know you're the first west Chase classical academy uh parents because they were the the first ones at that meeting that we sat down and spoke with and now we're just they're a part of our family. We really feel supported by our parents. We really feel um, that whenever we ask, you know, for help with certain things, they're always willing to to come and step up and say, how can I help? And they, you know, just even asking Teacher Appreciation Week has been different this year, of course, with not being able to do the things we want to do for our teachers on campus, but it was where we reached out to parents and said, hey, we need your help with, just send us a video of your scholar, you know, or your child talking about, we gave them sentence stems and we would love them to just share their feelings about their teacher so we can make a, a PowerPoint for them. And they just stepped up, they sent them right away and we were able to just, you know, show these wonderful videos of just full of love for our for our teachers and our families are, are we wouldn't be who we are without them. We wouldn't be West Chase Classical and Essex Jensen without them. And we are so grateful to them for believing in us, for listening to our stories, for deciding to place their children in our schools. And we wanna make sure that we do right by them and their children every single day. And like I said, we just wouldn't be who we are without them and we're super grateful for them. That's so wonderful. Um, I think that we have Ms. Funes back and um, let's bring her back in with us. Um, because we are so glad to have her back in. Welcome Fantastic. Back. So, so we were just talking about your connection with your parents and your families. Um, did you did you want to speak to that as well? Oh, uh oh, we lost her audio. <laughs> um, that's okay. Hopefully, she can join us in the chat. Um, oh. So let's talk a little bit. We talked about what's going on in the classroom, in the school. When are we coming back? What's your first day back? So we right now um, are discussing just different for our first day back on the calendar. It is August 18th, but of course, we're going to make sure that we are keeping our students and family safe and doing whatever is best for our, for our students. So we're working with our district. Uh, absolutely. And I mean, that's that's one of the, it's a critical component. I heard Ms. Funes for a couple of seconds. Um, so we are working, the district is working on plans um, in case we're not able to open. Um, I'm not, you know, that doesn't mean that we may or may not. But right now we just are not sure, but on the, we're, our original plan was to start August 18th, but right now um, we will update you, of course, all families on Facebook, social media, and different our different means of communication so that everyone knows when our first day back will be. Wonderful. Um, so you talked to, we talked a little bit about um, special ed and how that's been working for those students in distance learning. 
Um, how, how does that function in the classroom? So in the classroom, we do have a special education teacher that does pull outs with um, students that looks over their plans and pushes into whether it's push in or pull out and works with the teacher to make sure that we're meeting needs. Fantastic. Um, so we've talked about your community. We've talked about this school. Um, tell me a little bit more about um, how you guys are supporting just for anybody who missed at the very beginning, um, because we talked about it right at the beginning, but I know we've had some new viewers jump in. Um, how you're supporting the community throughout the pandemic. I know you're doing food distribution and other things. And um, let's just revisit that quickly um, before, you know, that for anybody who missed it. Yeah, so we've been, we were mentioning earlier that we just feel really grateful to have different partners, different community partners. And that's been through working with neighborhood schools, community development. The goal has been to make sure that we access all those resources that sometimes we don't know are there. Um, as schools, we may function, you know, it's just our school and we we try and help like we as we can, but Houston has a lot of resources, a lot of really great people who want to help. And this is where we are super, super fortunate to have neighborhood schools because they are our connector. They work um, exclusively with our two schools and they really help to plug um, you know, different things that we need for, for families. So who they've connected us with is um, through the neighborhood schools, they actually purchased or, or secured a grant for us to be able to provide laptops for our scholars, all of them who needed them at both schools, East Tech and West Chase, they, we were able to give them a laptop to use for distance learning. And, um, and that's all thanks to them. We've been doing supply uh, distribution where we made sure, and it's not what was in the classroom, it was you know brand new sets, which is always, who doesn't get excited over <laughs> new, new school supplies? So we got um, brand new scissors and you know glue sticks and crayons, construction paper packs, because one, our, as an enrichment, we offer art. And how can we ask our little ones to follow along with the art teacher if they don't have construction paper? So it's making sure that we're being really, you know, just thinking really far into what our scholars would need and are we fulfilling these needs? And it's it could, to someone listening, they might say, but it's just construction paper, but it, it's construction paper and they need it. And we need to think about all these things ahead of time. Uh, just so that our scholars can have what they need in order to, you know, just participate with us. A simple drawing with the teacher can mean a lot during these times when it's something fun that'll take your mind off of what's going on. So um, we gave them books. We were able to provide books. The Houston Food Bank is still working with us and we're doing the Backpack Buddies where we're able to send those backs home. The Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation also just donated a lot of books that we were able to do a second because we know they're drawing and they're having fun at home. So we went ahead and um, wanted to refill their supply bins that we uh, made for them in March. So we went ahead and, you know, got more glue sticks. So, so we know as educators, those were not really fast. So we got more glue sticks, more crayons, more construction paper. And um, we included some activity books. We also included those books from the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation. And, um, you know, just we're making sure that we're connecting Ms. Funes at ESEX. I'm not sure if your audio is back, but they're working with the Houston Food Bank as well and many different community partners to provide food for families on campus and for us we're partnering with WAM which is West Houston Ad Assistance Ministries where we have our uh, partner there um, Lisa who has just been amazing in helping our families and they're doing distribution Monday Wednesday and Friday they start at 9 30 the line does get very long but it goes by really quickly they have the National Guard helping to pass items out so it's you know it's going by really really fast and you don't need an ID you just give them your name and how many people are in your household and they just fill your car with amazing produce vegetables you know meat there's dairy there's been eggs so like a really great opportunity for families to feed um everyone in their home and that's again monday wednesday friday beginning at 9 30 in the morning and you can google west houston assistance ministries and their address should come up it's on meadow glen Awesome. So before we wrap up um, and let everyone get back to their evenings, um, let's talk about enrollment registration one more time to just give parents who are interested um, that info one last time. Tell me how we enroll. So for um, West Chase, 
you go to classical.edu backslash West Chase, and there will be an apply button there. You can apply in English. There's also a Spanish application. If you need help with any of the steps in the process, you can call 832-343-9574, 832-343-9574. And for, I'm gonna scroll up on our chat here um, to make sure that I give Miss, I don't know if you wanna try and see if your audio works, Miss Funes. No, okay, so for Ms. Funes, it's Eastex Jensen, E-A-S-T-E-X-J-E-N-S-E-N -E -E dash classical.edu to apply. And then the phone number is 832-478-2398, 832-478-2398, or she can also be reached at 281-671-4931, again, 281-671-4931. Fantastic. Thank you so much for both being here with us tonight. Um, and just a reminder for any parents that are watching, Families Empowered is also here to help you every step of the way. Um, while you search for schools, if you're still looking for the right school for your kid, um, we're here. We're here to help you. And um, you know, just like our neighborhood school school partners here. Um, we've also launched some COVID resources. Um, we have a COVID resource page on our website and you can find that at familiesempowered.org. And um, we've got some city specific resources, um, everything from computers to food locations, um, everything in between. Uh, if, if you've got any questions about any of those resources or if you just need a little bit of help walking through your school search, um, we're also available on the phone. All all the time um, every day of the week so feel free to give us a call at 713-589-8767 um so that's about all that we have tonight thank you ladies so much for being here and we will talk to everyone soon thank you thank you for having us <laughs>